Hi, my name's Chris. I'm one of the developers at Friendly Pixel. In this video, I wanted to teach you how to play our first game, Trust No Bunny. Now, Trust No Bunny is a social deduction game for five to eight players that takes around 15 to 20 minutes to play. At the start of the game, each player is secretly assigned to one of two teams, the townsfolk or the were bunnies. Each townsfolk is assigned a quirk containing a hidden wing condition, and each were bunny is assigned a mutation, which makes them extra powerful in some sneaky way. Neither side wants to share this information, since if the other team figures it out, it can be used to their advantage. At the start of the game, each player is also given a choice between two magic items, and then dealt three cards from a deck that contains an equal distribution of ones, twos, threes, and fours. Both of these, your magic item and your cards, tend to be safe to talk about during the game without revealing anything problematic. Now, the story of the game centers upon you and your friends, the brave citizens of Bunny Burrows, as your beloved town is besieged for five nights against a growing pack of wolves. Players gather cards, get nominated for guard duty, and then spend their cards at the guard tower to fend off the wolves. One point on a card defends against one wolf, with any undefended wolves going on to damage the town. At first, the wolves focus their attacks on the outer walls, and then once those have been destroyed, on the next night, they begin to attack the tower directly. If the tower ever falls, all the townsfolk lose. In addition to protecting the town, each townsfolk is also secretly assigned a quirk at the start of the game, which is a negative trait that should subtly alter their gameplay. Perhaps they're clumsy, greedy, or stubborn. Each quirk contains a private personal objective that must be accomplished in order for that townsfolk to win. If the townsfolk can defend the tower for five nights while accomplishing the objective of their quirk, then they will win the game. But, to make that more difficult, there are always two werebunnies in every game plotting to destroy the town. The werebunnies appear as honest townsfolk to everyone else, but to each other, their houses and nameplates look far more sinister. Werebunnies that are in close proximity to each other can speak telepathically back and forth, which is represented in-game by the red werebunny chat in the text box below. Now, if a werebunny gets nominated for guard duty, they can use their cards to defend, and they would do that the same way a townsfolk defends, by placing cards in their right bunny hand. But in most situations, werebunnies will want to spend their cards to sabotage the defenses and damage the town, and they do this by placing their cards in their left werebunny hand. These points are added to the wolf count instead of subtracted. If the wolves can destroy the tower by the fifth night, then both werebunnies win the game. But the werebunnies must move quickly. In order to make the tower vulnerable, the walls must fall on an earlier night. This means that if the werebunnies haven't destroyed the walls by the end of the fourth night, they immediately lose as they won't be able to attack the tower on the fifth night. But while that's the goal of both teams, much of the game is found in deciphering the decisions of the other players and leveraging the unique advantages of your magic item. Collectively deciding who should guard each night is key. Based on what you know, who do you trust, and why? In Trust No Bunny, this conversation happens at the start of each round during the voting phase. The mayor nominates a potential set of guards for that night. Then the town votes on those nominations, requiring a majority of the players to approve in order for the guards to get ratified. This means that most nights it won't be enough for the mayor to just pick the guards. It's far more advantageous for them to try and convince the rest of the town that they've chosen the right group for the job. Because if that vote fails, the number of wolves attacking that night goes up by a set amount, based on the number of guards being nominated. Then the mayor ribbon passes in a circle to the next player, and that player nominates a new group of guards. This process repeats itself until a mayor chooses a set of guards that gets ratified by the majority of the town. Once that evening's guards have been decided, the night phase begins. At this point, players are divided into separate chat rooms with the ratified guards going to the tower to collectively spin their cards to fight off the incoming wolves, while the remaining players return to town to gather their strength. That night, all of the players that are not on guard duty will get a full night's sleep, allowing them to draw a card in the morning. For each of these resting players, there are a couple other opportunities to gain additional cards while the guards defend. For instance, if a player is confident that the town will or won't take damage that night, then they can make a prediction, drawing an additional card in the morning if their hunch was correct. Or, if they trust another person who has stayed home, they may give them a blessing, creating an additional card for that player when they wake. 
Any werebunnies who stay home can use the cover of night to try and sabotage a townsfolk by guessing their quirk. A correct guess lets a werebunny exploit that quirk, earning an extra card for both werebunnies while destroying that townsfolk's magic item. A sabotage is a very powerful move for werebunnies, so townsfolk should be mindful of who they discuss their quirks with. If at any point a townsfolk believes they have discovered both werebunnies, they may make an accusation. But be careful, each accusation costs a random card from your hand, and a clever werebunny will try to starve the town of resources by making incorrect accusations that they can get others to go along with. If, and only if, every townsfolk accuses the correct two werebunnies, then all the townsfolk win immediately. And that's how you play Trust No Bunny. If you have any questions in-game, you can click the house icon in the top left corner to explore a list of all the items, quirks, and mutations that could come up in play. But hopefully this should be enough to get you started for your first game. The townsfolk try to overcome their quirk while defending the town for five nights, while the werebunnies pretend to be townsfolk so they can sabotage the town's defenses. If this sounds like a fit, you can pick up a copy on Steam right now, or you can try it for free at play.friendlypixel.com. Thanks.